Hello guys, uh, welcome to the voice blog. Today's episode is Am I in head voice or am I in falsetto? Um, the reason I'm going to talk about this topic is because it's a question that always comes up on the forums um, many many times and I think a lot of the confusion is because these words, head voice falsetto, are actually they're often used to mean slightly different things. Um, in the in the classical field of teaching, the false the term falsetto is used to uh, to describe <coughs> um, a legitimate kind of head voice sound, like a woman would make a soprano. You have the um, counter tenors that are the male um, falsettists they're called um, and they use that term to describe falsetto as opposed to head voice in a man which would be a, um, a you know a regular lyric tenor for example they would call that head voice and they would call a counter tenor falsetto whereas a, tr a soprano a female soprano um, the, the, the equivalent of that in a man would actually be the counter tenor because they're singing with, uh, with the same style of coordination but they would, they would call that the female head voice so there's a bit of confusion there I think the terms um, aren't defined clearly and essentially it confuses people into thinking that men make heavy sounds and women make light sounds because head voice for a woman the the soprano head voice is typically um, <coughs> related to a lighter sound a more heady sound whereas head voice classically in the male voice the, t the typical training they have is the heavier more full mix sound so uh, I, I talk about that to give you something to relate the other the other the the other kind of um, ways that other styles use these terms so a more contemporary style a more speaking level style <laughs> um, would use the term falsetto to mean a lack of coordination in the chords and the term head voice uh, to mean the chords are coordinating in a healthy way so often there's discussions about these terms and what they mean and uh, they don't people don't really make that distinction they um, the, 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 the simple the, the simple reality of it is is that different styles of teaching have traditionally used these terms in different ways so don't get caught up in the terms because um, ultimately they're not that important. What I want to talk about is if you're struggling with is this sound head voice or is this sound falsetto? Rather than thinking about it in that way I want to encourage you to think about it more in terms of am I coordinating my voice and my vocal cords or am I losing coordination in the vocal cords? Because what tends to happen with um, uh, beginning singers is that they will uh, start to move towards head voice, and as they get towards in, into their head voice, they will the chords will start to rather than the muscles within the chords coordinating as they should to move up into head voice, they start to lose that coordination. The chords start to uh, surrender to the outer muscles which 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 um, start to become involved in the process and as they start to become involved more more in the process as the singer goes up in the scale the chords start to come apart because they're not coordinating anymore and at that point the singer will struggle to move higher and higher in their voice because the chords need to coordinate for the singer to move up further into their head voice and if they're if the chords are um, 
losing coordination and the outer muscles are starting to interfere with the process at that point, then the voice can't go up further because the muscles coordinating the voice are no longer functioning as they should. So, am I in head voice or falsetto becomes a simpler idea at this point because if you think about it in terms of am I losing coordination or am I coordinating the chords then um, you can start to think about it in a clearer way because this is what it comes down to it depends on the context of that singer's understanding of their, partic of their voice so a singer might make a very light airy sound and depending on where they are as a singer in terms of their development that sound will be more or less legitimate so if they're an advanced singer then they because they understand how that coordination fits into the broader context of their voice the, co the coordination is legitimate the, the, uh, they aren't losing coordination so to speak the chords are just coordinated in a, in a, in a way that is um, balancing slightly towards more air and towards less chord compression as opposed to the singers just losing uh, chord uh, losing chord compression for the reason that the outer muscles are interfering with the process so if the singer goes up and they are losing coordination and they're making a light airy sound it, it's more about the re reason, reason behind that than the particular sound they're making so the simple shorter answer and the summary to the question am I in head voice or falsetto is simply are you coordinating your voice at that point or is the coordination of your voice being compromised and are you letting go of the coordination and uh, and are you squeezing with the outer muscles at that point you are in what I would call falsetto because you're no longer coordinating the voice and closing the chords or slightly opening the chords and you're not you're not actually using the chords at that point you're letting go of the chords and you're starting to squeeze with the outer muscles which don't have uh, any impact on the sound you're losing coordination so with that said <laughs> let's give you some examples of head voice and I just want to give you some examples of um, how if you are coordinating your voice it doesn't really matter how much air or um, how far you go over towards one side or the other you're still going to be in head voice basically um, if you want singers that are great examples of this um, the best probably would be um, Jeff Buckley he was a master of um, basically a master of manipulating the coordinations he was in to one to each extreme and people will say oh he's in falsetto there but actually he's in head voice he just has a much broader understanding than most singers in regards to what particular coordination he's in so if you're in, interested in this have a have a listen to him because he is the probably the best example that I know of um, Eva Cassidy is another very very good example um, uh, essentially they have a broader understanding of, of the coordinations in their voice than a lot lot of singers but that's to be expected because they're at a much higher level in terms of their ability and in terms of the work they put into their voice so um, let's give you some examples of head voice so if a singer would was moving up into the head voice and coordinating the voice um, the, sound will, the sound will stay consistent the amount of air that you hear in the sound won't change and this is important because often as singers move towards falsetto and they start to lose coordination you will hear more air and you were less chord. So um, often you hear something like um, like this. I don't know. Um, and 
you can hear in that sound that there's something changing as I go up the scale. You can hear more air and you can hear more push. And nine times out of ten with singers, the reasons for that are what I mentioned previously. They're losing coordination of the chords, the outer muscles will start to come in. So that's a problem. So what do you do at that point? Well, you focus on keeping the the um, exercise consistent. If I start with we, the top and the bottom of the exercise need to be we, with the same amount of chord closure, with the same um, the same vowel, the same um, consistency in the sound from the bottom to the top. If I can start to move towards a more consistent exercise, then I will be starting to force myself mentally to say I'm going to coordinate my voice regardless of what happens and uh, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to give in to the temptation um, of those outer muscles coming in and I'm going to, be, uh, I'm going to um, be stricter with myself and try and do this more consistently. So if I was going to do it more consistently Wee 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 So rather than focusing on the pitch, I'm focusing on trying to coordinate my voice in a consistent manner from the bottom to the top of the exercise. And this is meaning I'm staying in my head voice, but that sound would typically in the classical, <coughs> in the classical terms, that particular sound would be associated with the countertenor or the um, the falsetto. So what I'm trying to get across really is that depending on that particular, um, depending on how the that uh, a particular individual is has um, come to understand that particular term, they will give a different answer to the question of am I in head voice or falsetto? And that was the point I was trying to get across. So um, in regards to moving around with the coordination, if I if I say we 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 you can hear at the top there I was um, letting more air come through. I wasn't really breaking, but because I have a, um, a reasonably good understanding of that particular coordination, I'm able to open the chords more, let more air come through. I'm not going to flip or break. I'm not. The outer muscles aren't coming in. But if another singer made that sound without the broader understanding of the coordination of that of those pitches, then that particular sound for them may not be healthy because it may be that the outer, mus the outer muscles are coming in, they're losing coordination. So again, it depends on the context of the particular singer. And you could do that with um, a more typical um, mix exercise. So if I did a no exercise towards my mix sound, no, 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 no. I can move that heavier sound towards a lighter sound relatively easily because I have a, base, a, a, a basic understanding of the coordination of that particular pitch. So what I'm trying to get at is 
there's always a lot more context to simply is this head voice or falsetto. There's more context to that uh, than it often appears with that question. It depends on new. The answer to that question will depend on numerous things. It depends on um, that particular singer's knowledge, um, that particular singer's understanding of what those terms mean. So these are important points. <laughs> is what I'm trying to get across. And when you're asking these kinds of questions, be wary of the answers you're reading and try to think about these kinds of points as opposed to reading an answer to your question of is this head voice or falsetto and taking that answer as gospel because anybody could be writing that answer and that anybody could have a, a huge amounts of knowledge about their voice or relatively little amounts of knowledge. Um, lots, lots of people comment um, and post answers on forums and often they um, don't have huge amounts of knowledge uh, about singing. And I'm not saying that I have huge amounts of knowledge. I would say I have some knowledge um, and that knowledge is Base, basically gathered through the amount of work I've put in and reading and watching lessons and being in lessons for a long time. But I have a lot of things that I need to work on with my singing. Um, but these points I think I can help people with that struggle with these things because um, I was in the same situation as they were a few years ago when I was asking these kinds of questions and I had no idea what the hell was going on when I made a particular sound. So um, I hope this helps in if you're asking the question, am I in head voice or falsetto? I hope it gives you a bit more context to um, the question and I hope that you can move uh, into your exercises now with less confusion in regards to this point. I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Enjoy. Bye-bye.